So, when you see a whole bunch of vultures together, it usually means one thing and one thing only, that there is a kill. And all we can see are the remains of some stomach contents, most of which are kind of in this little gully on the side of the road. There they are. So it's not uncommon for predators to leave the stomach content and rumen behind. And that's what this ripples vulture is feeding on. You can tell it's a ripples vulture from its little yellow eye. The other white-backed vultures have got a dark eye. So there's a great comparison between the two. Also, the ripples is slightly bigger. And we've got three species here. We've got the ripples and the white-backed, which we can see. And I'm busy having a tug of war with the remains here. This could be good. As soon as it comes out, they're all actually going to want to get a piece of the action. So stand by for some squabbling because it will start happening, I can assure you. <laughs> it's incredible how quickly they make work of these carcasses. I'm actually surprised that... Oh, there we go. I spoke to you and I was going to say I'm surprised at how calm and peaceful this event is thus far. Maybe it's because it's still early in the morning and they're still warming up. It's one of my favorite things watching these animals wrestle one another for scraps. I've even seen one taking a bite into a black-backed jackal before, so they're quite feisty. I'm sure you heard that squabble there. That was between the slightly larger ripples. Perfectly engineered for their jobs on our planets, with that long, unfeathered neck, which won't get dirty if they're having to wriggle their head between the, the, the height of the carcass and the rib cage. They often do that, trying to clean off whatever meat they can. There's a tiny little hooded vulture there that you may have noticed that just popped out of the screen. And here we go. Vulture Olympics, it's the tug of war. Who will win? It will be hard to tell. <laughs> Colleen, I'm on the same boat as you. I also do love the way they hop about. And also the way they kind of posture their head when they're staring at another one. They really do know how to deliver a good death stare. And this is an awesome example of why these animals are so, so important for our ecosystem. They're cleaning up what the apex predators have left behind, making sure nothing goes to waste, making sure that no rotting or disease is allowed to set in. The housekeepers of the African wilderness, cleaning up after everyone else's messes. Hello, Anne. Um, you would like to know if we get the lappet-faced vulture here? Yes, we certainly do. That, you could say, is the king of the vultures. It's the biggest out of all of them, followed shortly behind by the white-headed vulture, which is also quite large, and then these three. So it's these five, well, it's the, these three plus the lappet-faced and the white-headed vulture that we get out here. Those are the five vultures that we are likely to see. Up in Kenya, you do get Egyptian vultures, which are really unique and rare to see, but I'm not sure if they frequent the Mara. Look at this one, <laughs> waddling down the road towards us. What would be interesting to know is which predators made this kill last night, because we are literally about 150 meters behind the main Mara bridge that crosses onto the other side of the reserve from here. And I also wonder when it happened and where the predators have gone. Hard to be certain, but maybe we'll be able to check for some tracks on this road, although the substrate does look very rocky and hard. So difficult to be, it might be a difficult crime scene to investigate. 
Okay, well, things seem, seem to have calmed down here, and Brent has given me some info regarding two cheetah that hang around here. So I think we're going to head up inland, away from the river for a short time, and then see if we can't scratch, scratch around and find these cheetah.